photographer and focus mostly on weddings. And just here's a little story of how I got into photography. So I basically think I became a photographer because my parents were not photographers. And my childhood went by very undocumented despite being raised by loving and creative parents. And whenever girlfriends would get together and we'd have summer parties and share stories from our past, I never contributed stories. And my friends would ask why not, and it's because I realized I couldn't remember them because there were no photos in albums or on frames to trigger my memory. So I think that realization, together with the fact that I was introduced to photography by this woman who I looked up to who was way cooler than me, uh, that made me start obsessively taking photos of everything that I really loved and everything that all the experiences and pets and places, everything I loved I just wanted to take photos of. So I'm an American but I spent 12 years in Australia and uh, I studied photography through high school and every room I ever lived in I would put those photos on my wall. So I ended up living in four different countries, uh, America, Australia, Barbados, and New Zealand and every one of those rooms I think I was always missing someone somewhere and so putting those photos up on the wall just made me feel more connected to those people. And um, I didn't realize until years later when my actual wall became a digital wall thanks to social media and I was writing my little bio for Instagram and my postaholic ways there and I realized that every photograph that I take is basically just a little act of gratitude. And Everything, every time I look back on those images, I'm just reminded of what I'm grateful for. So that's become really a huge source of inspiration for me and for my work. Then there was this decisive moment when I went from knowing that I love photography to wanting to be a photographer. And that was in Australia one summer when uh, the ground was hot and there was a hailstorm. So this ice hitting the hot ground created this amazing layer of steam. And I filled my camera up with sepia film and ran all over the property with my brother and we took photos and a couple, like a week later when I went to the film lab and picked up the prints, I remember just this feeling of excitement and joy and awe that somehow these photos not just captured that moment, but it captured the atmosphere of that day and it captured some of the magic of that moment of just my brother's silhouette standing in this field of steam. So I just knew I wanted to make more of those kind of moments. And at that point, I thought I was going to be a National Geographic photographer touring the world to do so. But the cool thing about photography is that whatever you're into at the time, you can just focus your camera on that. So my photography has really evolved with me. And uh, when I was into travel, all I wanted to do was travel photography. So I, was a, I did freelance photojournalism and travel photography. Then I became a mom, and I think I just became overly sentimental, and all I wanted to do was photograph other people's babies and their kids and families. And then I photographed my first wedding. And it was just a day full of so much joy and happiness that I was immediately hooked. And, uh, let me find where I am. and it's funny because I, I came back full circle to what my UCSC thesis was about, which was actually uh, a photo essay documenting the con exploring the concept of joy, which it really doesn't get that much more Santa Cruz than that being your thesis. But <laughs> then photographing weddings, it was a full circle moment back to being drawn to document that kind of joy. And I think it's just being around all those moments of true connection and joy, it's, it's contagious. That energy is contagious. And it's just a visceral reminder of what matters. So. I feel lucky that I get to experience that and I get to share that experience with my husband Gabe who since 2009 has photographed every wedding with me. And uh, we're just really aware of the fact that we are capturing people's really significant memories and what those photos mean. So one wedding was, uh, one of my favorite weddings was this multicultural wedding in Napa where uh, there was a Hindu and Western ceremony and the dad who was there was at the final stages of cancer. And he was so happy, the family was so happy to have him there. And it was this amazing moment where it was during portraits of just a candid moment of him looking to his daughter with so much pride in his face. And sadly, two weeks after the wedding, he passed away. And the image that the bride used to share the news and to honor his memory was this image. So after that, every wedding that I document, I don't just have a classic portrait of a grandparent and the couple looking to me. I ask them to look to each other and it just creates this moment of connection and 
and those images end up being so important. So lastly, I just want to remind everyone to please print your work, and uh, even if they're just on your iPhones, and just make albums, whether they're real or digital, so that your kids can look back on them one day, and you know, uh, surround yourself with those images of people and places that you love, and of the things that just hold a little bit of magic in them to remind you of what's good and what's right in the world, because we all know right now, America could use just a little bit more of that right now. <laughs> Thank you.